Welcome to our worship service today here at St. Luke's Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Amy Smith, and I'm really happy that you're able to be with us. I want to stop, be, uh, let you know before we even begin that today is a communion service, so you might want to stop right now and go and gather the things that you would need for, uh, to take part in the communion uh, in the Lord's meal as, within this service. We have a few announcements before we get started. This coming Friday, June 9th, we're going to have a new kind of event here at St. Luke's in an effort to just celebrate summer, the kickoff of summer, to spend some time together in fellowship and just enjoy each other's company. We're going to be having a summer barbecue and uh, actually summer bonfire is a better way of describing it. We invite you to join us at between six and nine, roughly, we'll have a bonfire in the back of the church, in the backyard of the church. And we're gonna have some music, we'll have some hot dogs and s'mores and marshmallows, those kind of things. Uh, we'll have some games to play, but just come out and enjoy each other's company. Feel free to invite your friends and your neighbors. This is open to the whole community. So we're really looking forward to having some, uh, just some good summer fun on June 9th between six and nine. We also are scheduling on uh, Saturday morning, June 9th, that, June 10th, I'm sorry, on June 10th, that will be uh, Coffee, Cars, and Christ in the parking lot of the church from 8.30 on, probably 8.30 to 11-ish. If you have a car or a truck or a motorcycle or something that you would uh, like to show to others, uh, please come on up and do that. Bring it, bring it along. If you don't and you just want to come and see other cars and uh, or, or talk to folks who, who are... Uh, fans of cars and things like that, please just come by and join in and stop and have the conversation and coffee and enjoy each other's company. We're looking to start an altar guild here at the church, uh, really for two things. One is to set up and clean up 
when we do have communion. And the other thing is to be a communion assistant and help with the distribution of the meal. Uh, every first su Sunday of the month this summer will be a communion service, so we're looking for folks to help with that. Please just get in contact with me or Dennis Faust if you're interested in doing that. St. Luke's is offering Bible school this year, Vacation Bible School, but we're offering it a little bit differently. We are par partnering with St. James Lutheran Church in Limerick. So our Vacation Bible School will be held July 10th to the 13th from 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. and it will happen at St. James Lutheran Church in Limerick. It's probably a five mile, if even that, drive from here at St. Luke's. So we're looking forward to that. If you have any questions about Vacation Bible School this year, please contact Candace Love and she'll answer all your questions. We are updating the prayer partners list. If you would like to be on that list, please contact Gwen Simmons and she will help you be part of that ministry. And also, if you're interested in being a Welcome Center host, please contact Linda Mertz and she'll uh, be happy to get you on that list and to get you prepared and know what everything, everything you'll need to do to be part of the Welcome Center host ministry here at St. Luke's. That is all of the announcements that we have. Let us begin our worship through the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose world, word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We hurt our community. We have squandered our blessings we have hoarded our bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, peace, and mercy be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless love and joy. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together in one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. 
God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird in the air and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished in all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them, human beings that you should care for them? Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor, you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. Our Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Second reading is from Second Corinthians chapter 13. Paul writes, finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I recently read a short story that I, I really enjoyed, and I wanted to start this morning by sharing it with you. Unfortunately, the author is unknown, so I don't know who to credit this work to, but I think you'll like it also as much as I did. The title of the story is The Wise Woman's Stone. A wise woman who was traveling in the mountains found a precious stone in a stream. The next day, she met another traveler who was hungry, and the wise woman opened her bag to share her food. The hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked the woman to give it to him. She did so without hesitation. The traveler left, rejoicing in his good fortune. He knew the stone was worth enough to give him security for a lifetime. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the wise woman. I've been thinking, he said. I know how valuable the stone is, but I give it back in the hope that you can give me something even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me something more valuable than what I asked for. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone. We'll talk more about this story later, but first let me share with you today what special day this is on the Christian calendar. Today we celebrate another festival. Last Sunday we celebrated Pentecost, which marks when the Holy Spirit descended to heaven, descended from heaven to fulfill the promise that Jesus made to the disciples the, that the followers of Jesus would never be orphaned or left alone after he left and ascended into heaven. Today is the festival, the Feast of the Holy Trinity. Holy Trinity Sunday always falls on the weekend after Pentecost. It is the day set aside to honor the mystery of faith known as the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now when I realized that today, the day after June Fest, was the Holy Trinity Sunday, I both cringed and was secretly thrilled. I cringed because as I mentioned a few weeks ago, there have been books upon books upon books written by theologians trying to explain the intricacies of the relationship among God and the Holy Trinity and what that means to Christians. Seriously, I've read some of them. I had to read some of them in school. It's overwhelming, and I cringed at the thought of trying to make that relevant to people who were bound to be tired on the morning after they had just put in such a massive effort. So given that trying to explain the Holy Trinity is so difficult, I thought, just stop. Just stop and instead talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, how they're present in our daily lives 
and how we can relate to them. So let's look at each of them individually. We've talked about how within the Holy Trinity, the Father is best described as the creator. And on our reading from Genesis this morning, which are the very first words found in the Bible, we're given a clear understanding of why the Father is referred to as the creator. The creation of the heavens and the earth, along with every living thing found there, is described in detail in that reading. We hear what occurred on each of those first six days, how everything came into being before the Creator rested on the seventh day. The Creator has given us everything, all that we have, which is meant to be all that we need, has been provided. Every natural resource was created by the Father and we're called on to treat it that way. Every living creature was created by the Father and we are called on to honor that and behave in a way that shows that we know what a gift all animals are. Every human being is a precious child created by the Father and should be treated as such. You will never look into the face of another and not see a beloved child of God. The second part of the Holy Trinity, the Redeemer, the Son, Jesus, came to be the Word incarnate so that we could learn how to live in harmony with one another. To live out Jesus' commands that we love God with all our heart and that we love one another as he loves us. The son of the Holy Trinity, Jesus, showed us how to live the word of God. And the Holy Spirit, the advocate of the Holy Trinity, was given to us after the son ascended to heaven so we would always have the spirit of God with us. We would always have a force helping us to find our way back if we ever found ourselves lost. There would always be a comforting presence to sit with us when we felt alone. We would always have a spirit to call upon when needed. A spirit advocating for and directing us to live in a way that would keep us on the good path. So that, in a nutshell, is a much simpler, more concise, and user-friendly description of the Holy Trinity. Now let me tell you why I was secretly thrilled that today, of all days, was Holy Trinity Sunday. I knew that after June Fest that most everybody was likely to be tired. <laughs> And rightly so, after this massive effort known as Judenfest was over, and with still a couple of hours of cleanup ahead of us, I knew better than to dive into an in-depth theological explanation of the Trinity. But what I'm so happy to share with you is how Junefest is a perfect example of how, you all of how well you already understand the Holy Trinity. You didn't just have a flea market here the last two days. You lived out your Christian beliefs within and for your community. You confessed your Christian faith and belief in the Holy Trinity when you showed your love for the Creator Father by honoring the resources that have been provided to us. Items that would have ended up in a landfill didn't end up in the trash. They're now being used by someone else. You follow the teachings of the Redeemer Son by showing your love for your neighbors, by providing an opportunity for them to repurpose their things, 
or for them to find things that they needed at a price they could afford. And I know we all caught on the Holy Spirit over, at some point over the last few weeks, whether we prayed for more time, more stuff to sell, more buyers, more strength, more patience, more help. We were never orphaned by our God. As promised, the Holy Spirit was with us. The advocate of the Holy Trinity led us when necessary and another blessing came out of this congregation for our community. You don't need a detailed explanation of the Holy Trinity, just like the man in the story realized he didn't need the precious stone. What he discovered he needed was whatever the woman had within her that allowed her to give the stone away. That was a thing of true value. No, a detailed explanation of the Holy Trinity is not what's needed. That's not the best thing that the church can provide. What's needed are examples of how to give it away, how to give the gifts of the Holy Trinity to others. That's what's truly valuable here. That's what the man in the story came back and asked the woman for, the thing that allowed her to give away the stone. And that's what you've demonstrated here. Not just your belief in your Christian faith in the Holy Trinity, but your understanding that those things are meant to be given to others. I invite you to just allow that to sink in, to recognize what happened here in the last two days and over the last few weeks. The activities we choose to focus on here as a church are the ways that we live out our mission. Our mission is not to have a flea market. Our mission is to know Jesus and make him known. As we move forward as a faith community and consider how we will spend our resources of time and talents and treasures, as we move forward and decide what St. Luke's will look like post-COVID, we must keep in mind our faith in the Holy Trinity and take comfort in knowing that we already have the ability to bring the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit into our daily lives and to give them away. No, our mission is not to have a flea market. Our mission is to know Jesus and make him known. We just happen to use a flea market this time. I can't wait to see what we use next. And let all God's children say, Amen. Let us continue our worship by confessing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. Holy Three, Holy One, you call the church to make disciples of all nations. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the 
gospel and direct all the baptized into lives of humble service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you spoke creation into being and called it good. Protect lands and waters threatened by human misuse and sustain living creatures of every kind, wild animals, birds, fish, and every creeping thing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you have given humankind authority over the earth. Raise up leaders who listen earnestly, speak honestly, and govern thoughtfully. Heal divisions between nations that we might agree with one another and live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you promise to be with us always to the end of the age. Surround those who surround those most in need of your healing presence, any who are lonely, who are grieving, and those who are sick. We pray especially this week for those on our prayer list and for those we bring before you now in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you set the earth on its axis and we experience the seasons. Strengthen those enduring challenges this summer, those who suffer in the heat, parents overwhelmed by childcare responsibilities and children experiencing food insecurity outside of school. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Holy Three, Holy One, you give rest when work is done. We give thanks for all the saints who now rest in you, confident in the promise of resurrection life in the age to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all, also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Two, three, four. Suffered 
that Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that he will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Brought together as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for and ever, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now until the end of the age. Amen.
Go in peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.